Hey everyone, we are live. It is Tuesday at 3 and we are live every Tuesday at 3. Uh, welcome everyone from Millionaire and 22 and welcome everyone from Klaus Bredek. Today I have two guests with me, Klaus Bredek as well as Tony Wake. And we're going to talk a bit about what you can do uh, to know your business a bit better. And um, with, with the anticipa anticipation of tomorrow's event, know your business here in Nelspreet. So guys, if you have any questions, send them in uh, on the live session and we will answer them live about knowing your business. So, Klaus, the first question that we have today is why is it important to know your business? To know your business is so important because each business has a big vision for what they set in for, for themselves. <laughs> So to get to that vision won't only be just creating objectives, creating goals and going towards them. You really need to focus on a lot of things that um, can help you to reach your, your vision. So we call that organizational knowledge. That's what mm. I'll be sharing at the business uh, event tomorrow, is that organizational knowledge to help you get to your vision. Yes, yes. And it's so important to really know your business and know what your business is about. Uh, to know where your strengths and weaknesses are, to know the in-depth you know, aspect of your business. On the live session we have Pierre Beside Note, uh, Ruan Ritsen, Anton Kutsia and Dylan Krier. Thanks for joining in guys. If you have any questions this week on knowing your business, business insights, uh, you know the, the inside things of your business, ask them on the live session. I have guests Klaus Broderick and Tony Wake with me this week that can help us answer those questions. Tony, what do you think about knowing your business? Well, a business is a lot of like being in a relationship. Um, if you're in a relationship, then you have to spend time with the ones that you love, right? If you get too sidetracked with what you're doing and you don't spend enough time with the person that you love, the relationship takes a, takes a plunge, it takes, takes strain. The same thing happens with your business. I mean, the amount of times you put into your business means what you're getting out of it. Mm. And at the same time, sometimes the business is going to need more of your time, it's going to need more of your input, because just like in a relationship, you're not 100% all the time. Sometimes you're there, your partner's there, and you've got to help her or him up. Other times you're down and the partner's got to help you up. Same thing with the business. And last night I watched a video from Patrick Ben David where he said that uh, employees work 40 hours a, a week, right? Yep. And if you're an entrepreneur and you're only working 40 hours a week, you're a part-timer. Okay, you're a part-time entrepreneur. If you work 80 hours a week as an entrepreneur, you're yeah. a full-time entrepreneur. Okay. And if you work more than that, then you're an all-the-time entrepreneur, all-the-time. <laughs> yeah. So, Klaus, what do you think about that? We're, we're talking about relationship with your business, um, spending time at your business. Uh, let's talk about that a bit. How important is it to spend that amount of time in your business? Looking into any business, working with a lot of businesses, um, we've identified that work never stops. It really never stops um, planning your business, executing your, your business plans, and really reviewing on a mm. continual basis all the work that you've put into that. So if you are an entrepreneur, it's hard work. It's not mm. easy. You're going to have times where you feel like feel giving up, but you need to continue. You need to keep working on your business, not only on the operational side, doing the sales, doing the quotations, mm -hmm. doing the actual operations, but really focusing on your business. Because we see that so many businesses start growing. They got, start employing people, but they never change and improve their business. Yes, they, yes. They, that part of the business gets left behind. And, and, and they call that working on your business instead yeah. of working in your business. That's true. Yes. Uh, Tony, what do you think about that? No, I completely agree with that. When it comes to, to being an entrepreneur, uh, when I do my entrepreneurial seminars and stuff as well, and the business coaching, I tell the, the guys, the new and up and coming entrepreneurs, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, mm. you work, you know, half day. And they're like, yes, half day. I'm like, exactly. 12 hours out of the, out of the 24 hours, that's mm. when you're working, sometimes more. Mm. That's not quite what they have in mind, right? They think, mm. you know, half day, the four hour work week, right? Mm. And yes, the four hour work week exists specifically for the people who's already made it, who's built the empires, mm. who've outsourced their stuff. But if you're an entrepreneur and you're busy building that brand, you're busy mm. building your name in the industry, mm. you want to make an impact, you want to get it there. It's going to take a lot of hard work to get the momentum going. And, and normally and realistically entrepreneurs work more to 16 hours a day 
or all the time is like working all the time <laughs> and, and I think if you have a passion for your business right if it's yes. what you love to do if it's what you really want to do in life if it's what you supposed to do in life you will be doing it all the time right yeah. it's, it's not yeah. something that you have to say hey I'm doing this now but now I'm switching off and I'm doing something else mm. if I just look at my business and what I do I love inspiring people. I love going across the country, teaching people about financial concepts. Mm -hmm. I like speaking in front of people and that's something I'll do all the time. Mm -hmm. Whenever I have off, I'm either busy working on my <laughs> website or you know, looking at the book again or you know, working on branding or something because that's what I love to do. Klaus, how important do you think is passion? Passion never burns out. Passion is the thing that keeps you going. It keeps you motivated to improve keeps you motivated to get out there and really work on your business mm. and really not in your business as much so um, I've, I've just to join in with the conversation that we've just had I've seen so many um, videos I've watched so many um, shows I've what read so many books about CEOs actually waking up at four or five in the morning um, as Tony said those are the people that made it those are the people that really is out there hustling going through all the faces day in and day out yep. and they still wake up at five four or five in the morning and still going out working hard so that's the passion that you have for your business your energy mm. will run out but your passion will keep going if yes. you actually see results because there's nothing that <laughs> that demotivates you so quickly and so much than not seeing results mm. but knowing your business having the passion to mm. strive and go hard for it then you will you will be on your way to success so important stuff guys so much value we're getting on the live session here today we have Pierre Vesey now Druan Ritsen Anton Kutsia Dylan Kreer Stian Pietersen Michael Dumas Peter Klaus Brudrik uh, Dylan Kreer saying good seeing you at Prift Fair last weekend of it <laughs> good seeing you there as well Dylan uh, Aisel Elisma Tolme, uh, Juan Oerendal, Ted Bowles, uh, Andres Bardnors and James. Guys, thank you so much for joining the live session. <laughs> if you have any questions this week, send them on the live session now. Uh, we have some guests. I'm Albert van Wijk. We have Klaas Broedrijk and we have Tony Wijk on the live session today that can help you answer these questions. So if you have any entrepreneurial business or side hustle questions, post them on the live session now. The second question we, we got today was, Klaus and Tony, what about risk in your business? So I'm saying that if you really know your business, right? If you really know your business inside and out, you will know the strengths and the weaknesses of that business. So when the risk comes, right? When there's risk in your business, you know where your strengths and your weaknesses are. So you are best prepared to tackle these risks. Klaus, what do you think? Um, we've done so many risk analysis at so many businesses and we quite often see, thinking about risks, they get so lost in the detail. They get really focused on uh, doing the probability calculations, the severity calculations, mm. the, the risk values, um, the risk treatments and so on. They keep working on that. But mm. when we do um, look into the business, we see that those that they could identify, those risks, keep happening. Yes. It keeps popping up. and being a worse risk than they calculate. So what we try to enable people to do is to think about risk, apply mm. risk-based thinking rather than to go into this really um, process approach into risks. Yes. Because you get so caught up in the details that you forget to think about the risk. Yes. And those are normally the things that you encounter, the, root, the true operational day-to-day -day risks. Because they don't think about the risks anymore. They say, no, we've covered the risks. Yes, our big risk register. Yes. We've got, we've thought we about everything. We have identified all of them. All of them. But you <laughs> and keep, now we know them. <laughs> and you stop working on them. Stop. Mm. You review it once a year. So what you're saying, it's a continuous process. Continuous. Well. Think about risk. Apply mm. the risk-based thinking approach. Okay. And that really helps. We've seen much improvement into all the businesses that have applied this yes. risk-based thinking. I like that. I like that. And... Uh, Tony, you mentioned something earlier to me when we were walking here. We're, we're in Nalspreit, we're at the Botanical Gardens <laughs> in Nalspreit. Uh, mm -hmm. Tomorrow we're having our event here, Know Your Business. And the three of us is going to talk about knowing your business here in Nalspreit. Um, and Tony, you mentioned to me that business is sometimes like a relationship. Absolutely. 
And uh, tell me more a bit about that. Well, again, if you look at relationships, um, like I said earlier, that if you're in a relationship, the amount of time you spend with your loved one, with the person you're in a relationship with, that determines how strong the relationship is. Um, if you make other plans, if you spend more time with your friends, or you go out more often than you spend time with the person that you love, what's going to happen to them? They're going to feel devalued, they're going to feel like they're not getting the, informa the, the information, the, the love that they need, and then they're going to start straying. They're going to, the bond is being broken in a way because you get out what you put in. Mm -hmm. And specifically in a new relationship, right? If you're in a new relationship, it takes a lot more effort for the trust to get built for and that, new for business that. start up and a new business guys. start yeah. up as well you know you need to put extra in you need to, to to get that relationship between you and your business you know strong so that your passion needs to keep flowing because I mean if you look at any entrepreneurial endeavor the the startup is the strong point that's when your passion is up high and you feel like you can you know what whatever stands in the way I'm gonna I'm gonna break through I'm gonna bulldoze through it and I see many entrepreneurs a year, two years down the line, they're running out of steam. They're feeling, you know what, why am I in this in the first place? So and you need to keep that relationship going. Eh? And it's the same thing like with these guys who are a little bit in a relationship and shortly after, you know, no, this relationship isn't working for me anymore. And then the next relationship only to repeat the process. Mm. And how many entrepreneurs do the same thing? They start the endeavor. They start pushing the endeavor. They start seeing a little bit of growth. But the moment that you know it gets a little bit tough, or stuff isn't working out like they're expecting it to, okay, this is not for me anymore. Now they're backpedaling. They're coming up with excuses. You should almost get married to your business. So <laughs> Basically, it's right? It's a permanent thing. It and when it comes to the risk thing that we said earlier, yeah. um, I hear a lot of people say, "Yeah, but if you're an entrepreneur, isn't it risky?" Mm. My immediate reaction to that is it's more risky to not be an entrepreneur. <laughs> because if you work for someone and you're not an entrepreneur, you're dependent on that person. Yes, yes. As an entrepreneur and with the tools you'll be you'll be getting at the event we're having tomorrow specifically, you'll be able to see, okay, this is my business, here are potential pitfalls and you get to prepare for them. So that one morning you don't just wake up and you get a phone call, sorry, um, you don't have to come to work today. Mm. <laughs> you, you have the gift of foresight when you're an entrepreneur. Let's, yeah. let's pick up on that just now. I would like to talk about that being, being self-dependent and independent. Exactly. Um, so on the live session we have Pierre Besaynout, Ruan Ritsen, Anton uh, Kutsia, Dylan Kriastian, Michael, uh, Peter, Klaas, uh, Aisel, Elisma, John, Ted, uh, Andres, and James, and Jonathan. Uh, hi, Jonathan and Jaki. Guys, thank you so much for joining in the live session today. Dylan is asking, at what point would you recommend outsourcing sectors you don't uh, specialize in? Cost of time spent learning versus cost of time saved and results. Uh, Dylan, my first glance at that question is that sometimes you really need to decide in which industry you are. Uh, it really depends on that risk factor again. In my businesses, a lot of the times I've outsourced things that to two companies or two people that weren't dependable, you know, and they failed at what they should have done or they didn't keep to the timelines. And then my business name uh, suffered from, from that a poor performance in in their in their um, business so if that person doesn't pull their weight so it's something that your business is not extremely dependent on um, your core business the core function of your business the core product or service that carries your business never outsource that okay make sure you you specialize in that you do it well and then only outsource things that wouldn't necessarily sink your business as soon as that person does not perform. Klaus, mm. Tony, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, uh, it's about control. So when you need to outsource, it's obviously something that you need. It's something that you need in your business to continue for. You either don't have the skills, don't have the knowledge, or don't have the time to deal with that certain aspect. Mm. So when you establish that you need to outsource something, you need to be able to apply controls. Because at the end, when you outsource something and it influence your product or service to the customer the customer will yes. never talk to the person or the company that mm. you outsource to 
they yes. always come directly to you. And so it's, it's your name it, that's, it that's on the it line is. here. So, so you're saying putting in processes and controls, controls to yes. kind of, you know, ensure performance. Yes, but not so, don't start the controls on the operational side. Start the controls before you think about outsourcing. Mm. So then you will, for example, identify I need um, someone to cut my lawns at yes. the outside of the offices. So <laughs> yes. you need to apply, do they need um, their own equipment or mm. am I allowing them to rent equipment? Yes. Am I allowing persons without a grass cutting certificate <laughs> to be able to cut the grass? So Setting those standards. are the controls. Yeah, so set your standards, standards. Okay. think about the risks again think about what is the risk mm. of outsourcing and if you are satisfied with that risk and you say I can handle it this is how I can prevent or mitigate that risk yes. then go for it because it helps to get that knowledge and that outside look into your business and Tony okay. anything you want to add on that well whenever I hear about businesses and brands and like you say you're putting your name your business on the line basically whenever you outsource you are linking your mm name your your standards to whoever you're outsourcing with yes right so pick them very well pick them, <laughs> pick them well pick them decently you know do your research you know for every for every hour of research you put in it's going to save you a lot of heartache down the road yeah. get feedback uh, contact those people who you're going to outsource mm. to contact their clients and get feedback from their clients listen yes. are you happy with this guy uh, with this business with this person mm. you know i'm thinking of doing business with them because as always the proof is in the pudding mm. you know? and it reminds me of a, of a story I think Zig Ziglar told at one stage where in today's modern age where we work with everything digital it's not like in the olden days where you get a carpenter that makes a table and maybe a chair and at the end of it he carves his name into his work so wherever that table or that that chair goes everybody knows okay yes. this this name this is the person who made this very important in today's life we have the digital era and wherever you put your brand whoever you associate with mm. is either going to build your business name or it's going to break it because you're either as strong or as weak as who you're associating yourself with good value guys on the live session today if you like what you're seeing send the shops so that we know we're on the right track um dylan a last point on that note is that uh, as you build your business you'll find where your strengths is and you can work on the Pareto principle 2080. You'll find that some things you spend 20% of your time, capital, and resources on, and it gives you 80% of the result. And then there's these other things that you spend 80% of your time, capital, and resources on, but it only gives you 20% of the result. And then you can start out looking to outsource these things that's taking your time, taking your capital, taking your resources, but it's not contributing that much to your business. But that, that major contributor, which you now spend 20% of the time on, but it gives 80% of the result, never outsource that. Um, guys, on the live session today, thank you everyone for joining in. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this valuable session. I think Klaus and Tony gave some real value today. Uh, tomorrow we have our event, Know Your Business. Um, know Your Business, and we're going to talk a bit about uh, a different aspect of business. Klaus, in 10 seconds, yes. what are you going to speak about tomorrow? It's going to be focusing on the vision through organizational knowledge. So you need the knowledge to get to your vision. I like I'll that. be sharing that <laughs> tips and tricks and the knowledge and the skills and experience that we've accumulated at the Know Your Business event. It's only 10 seconds. 10 seconds? Jeez, only 10 seconds. What are you seconds. going to talk about? Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about having passion in business, specifically okay. as a startup or, a, or a SME, how to keep that passion, how to keep growing mm. that passion, and how to keep that momentum going no matter where you are in your business and keep on pushing through. Awesome, awesome. That sounds great. I'm going to talk about my journey, uh, tools and tips a lot that I learned along the way in all aspects of business growth from nothing to the end result that you desire. So that's the Know Your Business event. Uh, this week we were, were in now spread for the live session with Klaus and uh, Tony Wake as guests here today. Uh, some announcements. On the 30th of uh, August, we have a Know Your Business in Middleburg as well. So Middleburg, we're coming for you on the 30th of August. <laughs> Are you ready? And we're going to do a similar event there. Guys, everyone, we had a lot of people joining in on the live session today. Thank you so much for joining in. We'll see you again next week. Uh, Tuesday at 3 on the live session. Get your questions ready.